Hello and welcome to Screening Room. To this week we're talking all about princesses. That's right. I'm your host, Princess Katie Pence. I'm joined here today by Emily Blahetka, who is um, Pocahontas, of course. I'm Scout Mayor, and I am Belle. I'm Princess Ariel, and that's right, we're talking about Disney movies this week. Now, there have been a lot of Disney movies. They've been making movies for a very long time, so we had a really hard time kind of narrowing down which princess do we want to talk about, and there's so many new ones. Do we want to go to the old school ones? Do we want to go to our childhood favorites? We really kind of had a tough time narrowing it down, but we kind of decided on a theme, and we're going to go from the old world under the water and all the way over to the new world. So I'm going to throw it on over to Scout, who's going to go ahead and tell us a little bit about her old world princess. All right, so to start us off with the old world, we have Beauty and the Beast, the classic story, one of my favorite all time Disney movies. It starts off in this enchanted forest and leads into a castle where Prince Adam is living with his servants. All of a sudden, though, a witch comes and curses Adam and he turns into the hideous beast that we all know. While this is happening, over in a small village outside of the forest, there is Belle, and she lives there with her father, Maurice, an inventor. Belle and Maurice are kind of the outcast of this French village. They're new there, although there is Gaston, the hunk of the village, who is chasing after Belle and wants her to be his wife. During a Gaston and Belle's engagement type thing, there, Maurice goes off into the forest and is traveling to an inventor's convention. While he is in the forest, he ends up getting lost and abandoned by his horse. He runs into the enchanted castle that Beast, Prince Adam, lives in and stays there with the company of Prince Adam's servants. However, the Beast finds him and takes him as his prisoner. Belle later finds this out and travels into the forest and goes to rescue her father, Maurice. While she is there, the Beast will not release her father until he has another prisoner. So Belle sacrifices herself to be his lifelong prisoner and lets her father go back to the village. So, will Belle be able to break the curse and the Beast will turn back into Prince Adam? We don't know quite yet, but let's check out this trailer first. Presents its all-new 30th full-length animated motion picture. Is anyone here? Mama, there's a girl in the castle. Good. A girl. The classic story of beauty and the beast. He was a lonely beast, cursed by a mysterious spell. And she was the beautiful young girl who could set him and his kingdom free. She's the one. She has come to break the spell. They were two complete opposites. I don't want to have anything to do with him. She is being so difficult. Until something wonderful happened. Something sweet. Straighten up. And almost kind. Show me the smile. But he was mean and he was coarse and unrefined. And now he's dear. You look so and so stupid. I didn't see it there before. It's a story filled with fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I beg your pardon. Adventure. Sacre bleu. Invaders. <laughs> and dozens of wonderful new Disney characters. Keep it down. Featuring six new songs from the Academy Award winning composer and lyricist of The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Share the fun, the magic, and the music of an entertainment event you'll never forget. Disney's Beauty and the Beast. All right, Beauty and Beast, there you have it. One of my favorite Disney movies ever. It just has a great message to it to it of not judging a book by its cover and getting to know someone before you actually fall in love. What do you guys think about this movie? I mean, I know, you, I know you mentioned that, you know, it's all about not judging a book by its cover, but that's kind of one of my biggest issues with this movie is that the entire village that Belle lives in totally, like, makes her a social outcast because she reads. I understand that because of, you know, the time period and whatnot, that it's not conventional for women to be reading, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like it's a little excessive 
to totally shun her just because she's interested in books. I so never thought about that before. I, I never thought about that. That's an interesting take. That, that was so mean that because she read it in, in the beginning scene where she's going through all the books and he's like, sorry, I, like you read them all. And it was just like, wow, that's a little mean. Um, yeah. But de I was definitely thinking when g watching the trailer, which part of the movie sticks out to me the most. And I remember when Belle walks into this uh, big mansion and everything comes alive. That's what I mostly remember when I was a child. So what do you guys remember most? The wolves. They terrified me. The wolves in the forest, that's how Belle's going to find her father and whatnot. And it's just like, oh my god, you know, there's these terrifying wolves. I mean, I was like six or something the first time I saw it. So these wolves, I was just absolutely terrified. I had nightmares for like weeks about those things. Um, the yellow dress that she wore in the dance, that always stood out to me. I was like, I'm going to get married in that dress, which I'm not, but it was God. always just my favorite it's dress so ever of Disney Princesses. You could we'll get it see. in, like, white, and then it'd be beautiful. <laughs> I don't know, I was pretty envious, though. Everybody's all, yeah, I mean, everybody's always like, oh, I love her dress, and it's so beautiful. I'm like, no, I want that library. Like, have you seen the library? <laughs> it's just, like, huge stacks of books, and I'm all like... That is my ultimate dream. That is what I want in my house. I just want a giant library. <laughs> yeah, and one of those libraries that had the ladders where you can just slide back and forth on yeah, it. That would be cool. so much fun. Yeah, definitely. Well, at least you didn't have to marry uh, Gaston. He was so disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm not trying to give it away if you didn't see it. <laughs> well, this goes back I'm pretty to like, sure everyone has seen it, though. So. This kind of goes back to like my original point. Like Everybody in the town thinks Belle is weird because she reads it. Everybody loves... Gaston because he's this big burly manly man and they think he's the best because he's physically strong and he fits the stereotypical masculine man role and that bothers me because it's all like you know his little buddy then everybody hates him because he's kind of dirty and underhanded but because he doesn't fit the role of being a man people don't like him as much so I don't know maybe I'm reading a little bit too much into the gender stereotypes it is a pretty old movie but at the same time that's okay. I definitely do not like Gaston because of there's a scene where he, well, in the beginning of the movie, he sticks out his feet and he's singing to Belle, trying to like uh, woo, her. woo her. Yes, and he sticks out his feet and she's like, "Oh, you want to massage my feet?" And he's like, "Oh, like you're massaging my feet." And she's like, "Oh, that's disgusting," which is yeah. appalling to me. That's really gross. I don't like feet. <laughs> with that part too, one of my favorites was when he's kind of by the door and she opens and he just flies out into that pig sty area and it's just stuck in the mud, like, that's where he belongs. Yeah, definitely. I, Gaston is definitely one of those people that I do not like. He's one of, you know, of all the Disney characters that you can hate, I definitely don't like him. But we have to take a break. We'll be back with more Screening Room right after this. Hey, can't find what you're looking for? What? You can find what you're looking for and more at WMCM. WMCM TV has plenty of shows you can view at your pleasure. There's Profile, where we interview people throughout the community. Or, if you like sports, we have Sports Talk Live and Sports Scene. And if you're into celebrity gossip, that's why we have Afternoon Delight. Well, that all looks great, but I'm on a computer, not a TV. I bet you guys don't have a way for me to watch this stuff on a computer. Oh, we have that covered too. Just go to WMCMTV.com for all the updates. Wow, that solves all my problems. Thanks, WMCM Genie. Hello and welcome back to Screening Room. I'm really excited. It's my turn to talk, and I'm going to talk about my favorite movie as a kid. I've got a couple different favorite movies now, but I'm going to talk to you about The Little Mermaid. Of course, she was one of my favorites because, well, the red hair, I had to... I, it's like written into a contract of being a redhead. You have to love other redheads. Now, The Little Mermaid is a classic story of two lovers from two very, very different worlds. Sweet young mermaid Ariel feels like her father, King Triton, just doesn't understand her, like all teenagers do. Ariel spends so much of her time exploring different shipwrecks with her friend Flounder and learning about the human world from Scuttle the Seagull. While Ariel's get curiosity gets the best of her one day, and she goes to watch a ship sailing by and ex see the humans that are on board. When the ship catches fire and subsequently goes down, she saves Prince Eric, whom she is of course smitten by, from drowning. Well, King Triton learns about Ariel's exploits from her chaperone and his advisor, uh, Sebastian the Crab. Of course, he is furious, and he destroys Ariel's collection of the human world items, 
Which, of course, as you can imagine, makes Ariel incredibly betrayed and distraught over losing her collection. Well, distraught as she is, she goes to the sea witch Ursula, who agrees to turn her into a human so she can be with her beloved Prince Eric. The catch? Not only does Ariel have to give up her voice, she also has to get Prince Eric to kiss her in less than three days, or she'll be turned back into a mermaid. Can she get Eric to fall in love with her? Will the sea witch get her way? What happens when King Tritons turns at, finds out that she's been turned into a human? Well, let's just take a look at the trailer and see what happens. favorite movies as a child. I loved Ariel. I loved one of my favorite things about this movie has to be the soundtrack. I definitely think The Little Mermaid has one of the most classic and recognizable soundtracks in the entire Disney universe. From Under the Sea to Kiss the Girl. I'm s I mean, I'm still jamming out to these songs in my car, so I think they're wonderful. I mean, it's, it's just got the classic Disney formula. You have a girl, you have a love interest, you have some conflict, and you have a happy ending at the end. And I mean, I love happy endings. I, I know that nowadays they're starting to switch up the formula a little bit, bringing some different types of movies and whatnot, but I absolutely loved the way that they did The Little Mermaid. What do you guys think? Did you love it as much as I did? Well, I would have to say that I do love The Little Mermaid. However, the moral of the story um, is there. However, she does make some silly decisions, and uh, that, this kind of makes me analyze the movie and thinking, why did she want to become human and all these things, um, to, to see the prince and all these different things? I don't know. I just don't think that it's... She's a very smart princess. I'm not trying to push, put you down in that aspect, but maybe I just love my princess a little more. <laughs> all right. That's fair enough. Well, I agree with you. I think the soundtrack is great. I love it. It's always so upbeat and catchy. You know every song, all the words to it. But I do think that she was a little rash in just leaving her family and going up to the land and being with this prince who doesn't even really know her and knew she existed. You have to admit, she's pretty determined, though. She wants to be a human. She wants to meet Prince Eric, and she does what it takes. She is. She's, she's really brave in that way, but... She might be. It might be for a shallow reason. You know, she just wants to meet a, meet a really cute boy, but I, she's very determined, so I have to give her that for sure. Okay, well, we give her that. However, um, she did go out far and land. I did like the part, though, where she did go out and land. It's the creativity of how she became a human and learning to walk and like not being able to speak and communicate. So the communications aspect was really interesting. I'm not trying to be all like analytical here. <laughs> no, I agree, because I mean, that's definitely something kind of confusing. You have to be like, OK, we're going to take a 16-year-old girl, and we're going to give her legs for the first time. What does she think is interesting? Mm -hmm. Like, We're introducing her into a whole, literally a whole new world. So, so that, I get, that is creative for the, this type of Disney movie. It's different than others. Yeah, I like that aspect a lot, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, definitely, though, I think that it's the classic Disney movie. So I think we can all agree on that. We have to take one more break. We'll be back with more Screening Room right after this. of Wisconsin La Crosse, surround yourself with potential. Surround yourself with lifelong friends. Step on campus and be welcomed with a friendly smile. It's just like home. Surround yourself with nature's beauty. Nestled in western Wisconsin's driftless area, it's perfect for learning. Hike the blocks, bike the marsh, soar. 
surround yourself with challenging academics. Our motto is Mens Corpus Gang, Latin for mind and body. Experience a whole education. Conduct research. Surround yourself with distinction. Surround yourself with UW Lacrosse. And we're back. So, we saw a film from underneath the sea, well, and also in the old world, but moving on from there, let's check out to see what princess there is in the new world, and uh, that's mine. So, my story starts off with, in the old world, in England, uh, Governor, his name is Ratcliffe, takes a crew of men, and don't forget, John Smith, to the new world. For one reason only, and to get gold, let me just tell you, a selfish reason, a reason. but while they're going... To, while they're going to the New World, something takes place within the Native Americans there. This young girl named Pocahontas has a dream. And this dream is very interesting because she sees a spinning arrow, something she's never seen before, pointing, it, pointing in a direction in her life that perhaps isn't something that she's used to. So she, sa she shares this dream with her uh, mother, Willow Tree. And uh, it's very interesting because she wants to live a life that is perhaps different than one that she's living. So, what she does is, um, Pocahontas, you have to understand, is a very interesting girl. She's very free-willed. She has a raccoon friend named Miko and uh, a hummingbird friend named Felt. So, this character, and it's a real-life story, um, she roams through the forest and pretty much does whatever she wants. As a princess, she is the chief's daughter. So, as the men from the New World finally arrive, uh, Governor Ratcliffe and John Cliff land on this land and John Smith goes to this land trying to find um, something new, something that he has not discovered yet before. And um, he discovers the savage and uh, so does Pocahontas discover John Smith is a savage. And it's a very interesting moment because in that moment she finds that perhaps this is what her arrow was pointing to. but. Of course, there is some controversy between the New World and some Europeans landing, trying to destroy the land and trying to find some um, gold and whatnot. So let's see what happens to Pocahontas and John Smith in this uh, film before I give it away. She was the daughter of a chief. She has her mother's spirit. She goes wherever the wind takes her. Come down here! And she lived a life of freedom. No! Not that way! Watch out! Come on, lads! Steady on your course! He was an explorer, searching for adventure in a new land. Come on, men. We didn't come all this way just to look at it. Let us hope they do not intend to stay. I'm counting on you to make sure those heathens don't disrupt our mission. I... I... I made it myself. But though their worlds were very different... These pale visitors are strange to us. No one is to go near them. Their destinies were one. From Walt Disney Pictures comes the story of an American legend. Who are you? Pocahontas. Come run the hidden pine trails of the forest. Come taste the sun-sweet berries of the earth. Come roll in all the riches all around you. And for once, never wonder what they're worth. Oh. Hello, John Smith. The tree is talking to me. Then you should talk back. He's handsome, too. Oh, I like her. She believed in her dreams. Wokeworm has asked to seek your hand in marriage. I think my dream is pointing me down another path. Followed her heart. What are you doing here? I had to see you again. You'll be turning your back on your own people. I can't leave you. And found a love that changed the world. Let the spirits of the earth guide you. I love him, Father. Bravo! On June 23rd, Disney presents its all-new 33rd full-length animated motion picture. With music by Academy Award winner Alan Menken and lyrics by award-winning lyricist Stephen Schwartz. And you'll never hear the wolf cry to the blue corn moon for whether we are white or copper-skinned. This summer, experience the adventure. Until you can paint with all the colors of
Pocahontas. Pocahontas is a real story and uh, you may not know though that her real name um, is not Pocahontas but Pocahontas does mean little spoiled brat so her name does not represent something as enchanting or um, girl with like wild powers um, she was a little spoiled brat perhaps you may say um, but I do love the story not because some critics may say that it, it's not as real as the real story, but the story for Disney's, Disney movie does have an underlying message um, that tells a story from the Native American perspective. And the song Colors in the Wind um, really does represent that, where Pocahontas explains everything that she feels in this world that perhaps John Smith does not. So, uh, tell me, what do you think about the movie? I really liked this movie. I thought it was kind of a little bit traditional take. She's not your typical Disney princess. Um, you don't actually you don't really see her a lot when you think of like the Disney princess lineup and you see them like on TV. Like, oh, well, these are all the Disney princesses. You actually don't see her a lot in the lineups, which actually kind of bothers me a little bit because I think if you're gonna do a Dis if you're gonna be in a Disney princess movie, you should just have all the princesses, or you know, regardless of how princessy they are. I think they do that just because she doesn't have a big fancy dress, but. I really like, um, I know that they worked pretty closely with the Native American community um, on the movie because they didn't want to, you know, really stereotype the images that they were portraying. So I really appreciate that. And I think that they actually did a very good job. I understand that it's not completely like the original story, but I think they did a really good job of taking the original story and adapting it for kids. Yeah, definitely. A great story. I like that it's based on a real person, too, instead of, you know, like other ones that are just based off fairy tales. Pocahontas is actually a real person, so I always found that interesting. Also, my favorite is Miko, the raccoon psychic. He was always so cute and getting into trouble with just everyone. Everyone. Along with Percy, the dog, so Miko and Percy, um, which reminds me of uh, Percy, which was uh, Ratcliffe's dog um, from England, kind of looks like... Katie's dog. He does kind of look like my dog. So that's, that's weird. That's Very a weird similar. connection there. Also, um, something, there is a kiss in the movie, so that's interesting. I mean, all, obviously all Disney, Disney movies have kisses, but um, Pocahontas' kiss did not break a spell. Well, I think that's kind of, in, and you see in our two movies, you know, you have some kind of witch and there's magic and a spell. Mm -hmm. And in your movie, I mean, there is kind of an element of magic. You have kind of like the power of the forest and whatnot and you know the spiritual side of it so I think that's kind of why that kiss doesn't necessarily play into that yeah um, I think that's a really good point though that it's not like oh true love's kiss will fix everything I think it really does kind of show that Pocahontas really does have to really dig within herself and find out what she wants and what she's willing to do for her love and whatnot Definitely. And when looking at the bodies, I'm not trying to get like all analyzing, um, the bodies of Belle and uh, Belle <laughs> and Ariel. <laughs> Ariel and Pocahontas, they're very heroine-like bodies, very yeah. just perfect. And um, that is Disney, of course, in the way that they portray it. But um, it's interesting that they chose to do that to Pocahontas, make her look As older well. yeah. and more uh, woman-like figure. Mm -hmm. I think what's really interesting about Pocahontas is that this is the only movie in which there's not your real stereotypical happy ending. Um, this is one of the only movies you don't have like a wedding at the end or you know some cute little love scene or whatnot. She actually, you know, John Smith is injured and so she has to decide is she gonna go with them? Is she gonna stay? Is she gonna send him back and whatnot? So I, I mean it's really sad so she ends up going with them, spoiler alert. She ends up going back to England and it turns out then that he, you know, she has to leave her whole family behind like hundreds of you know, mm -hmm. miles behind. So I think that's really interesting. Yeah. But why don't we move on? Why don't we talk about some of the newer Disney movies and what we think of those ones? Okay, so, so tell us, Katie, one who knows everything about Disney movies. Of course. Um, what do you have to say? Uh, well, of course, my n the newest Disney movie out is Frozen, and I thought this was an amazing movie. I think this really did a good job of kind of changing the Disney mold of characters. I mean, you see two characters, Elsa, who really kind of struggles with uh, her emotional side and whatnot, and then you see Anna, who is just really quirky, and she doesn't have a lot of people to go to, and so I think they do a really good job of just, you know, creating a different woman who's not perfect and who has, you know, some, who's very relatable and whatnot. Um, so I think they do a really good job there. I also really like that while there is some love interests, they go ahead and they really make it about the power of sisterhood and they really make it about 
being, you know, in true to who you are and confident in who you are. And I think that really sends a, and a wonderful message to young girls. So I was a huge advocate for Frozen. I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but that was one of my favorites. Well, what do I have to say about it? I haven't seen Frozen. However, um, something interesting about that I do know about it is that um, there is two romantic lovers in the movie. So um, that's kind of interesting. That's the, been the first time in a while that they represented that. But in the movie Pocahontas, um, Pocahontas does have two lovers, w John Smith in the first movie, and another one that I can't really remember um, in, the, in, in the second sequel, in the yeah. sequel. Yeah. So they're bringing that idea back of having two lovers. It is kind of a, a common theme, though, to have um, two different lovers. Yeah, the whole love triangle going on. But I think it's good. I mean, it shows that you can have. There's not always one two. One true love out there. Yeah, there's multiple loves all over the world. <laughs> we can all be lovers. <laughs> Actually, one of the newer Disney movies that I like too is Tangled. I did like it's Tangled. It's classic, just the Rapunzel. I thought the whole story was ga great, and they had some really good songs in there too, like When Will My Life Begin, where she's out and about in her house doing all her different activities. I was actually really disappointed in Tangled's songs. Really? I was told that they were, you know, it was going to be the new musical and whatnot. And there was like three songs, and all of them were really short. I mean, I loved the, the one about the lights and whatnot. That one was great. But the other ones were sh so short that I was really disappointed in them. Come to think of it, I can't remember any of the songs from Tangled. I'm, I yeah. just can't. It, it's not there. They were it's so not in my short, mind. and they weren't... I mean, they were catchy, but it wasn't like, oh my god, this song's so good. <laughs> yeah. So I was disappointed by that. I disagree. I have all the songs on my iPod, and I listen to them <laughs> frequently. They were good. I mean, I, I did like uh, Tangled a lot, though. I thought it was a really interesting take on the whole Rapunzel thing. Yeah. Um, especially because she goes through this whole journey in order to get back, and how they introduced, you know, the parents and the witch and some magic into it. I think they really did a good job uh, kind of creating a whole new story out of a very, you know, common fairy tale. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, but at the same time, she was kind of ditzy, and I didn't really like that. So. I would oh definitely yeah. say that I took the movie as a comedy. It was very funny. It was very funny. And there, there were just a lot of classic moments, like um, you know, all the other ones that, all the little unicorns that were mm -hmm. kind of hidden throughout. So I really appreciated that and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all the time we have for that. I think we're going to go ahead and talk about some things that are in theaters right now. We have a lot of new movies coming out, and that's really exciting. So the, I saw The Maze Runner, and that was fabulous. Have you guys seen any other new ones? I have not, so I do not have much to say. Let's yes. see, we have uh, The Box Trolls I know is up there, uh, This Is Where I Leave You. There's a whole bunch of really cool movies coming out in theaters right now, and I really, I mean, there's some great actors, too, uh, and the whatnot. The Equalizer, A Walk Among the Tombstone, and Dolphin Tale. Coming soon now. These are coming out real soon. I believe on DVD some of these are. Um, we have Gone with the Wind, Annabelle. That, that's the one uh, that's the sequel to Conjuring. It's kind of like a prequel. It's the doll in the oh Conjuring. God, that, oh, wow. I'm not going to lie. You could not pay me enough money to go see <laughs> I any horror I did not think The Conjuring was that bad. Okay. So The Jungle and uh, Best of Me. I haven't heard of either of those ones, but I, I've seen that. An I've heard that Annabelle is actually terrifying. I had to see the preview before, um, before The Maze Runner, and it was terrifying. But now we've got some new movies over at the Rivoli, and that's really exciting. I love going to the Rivoli. They have some great student prices, and I really appreciate that. Uh, we have The Hundred Foot Journey. We have Magic in the Moonlight. Of course, they brought back Ghostbusters, oh, which yeah, is I really exciting. I wanted to see that. Oh, now on DVD. So if you still watch DVD, don't watch Netflix, you can get some The Fault in Our Stars. That was really popular. I went and saw that in movies, and that was really, really good. You're going to cry, but I would definitely recommend renting that one. Get it from Redbox. The ca they came together. Neighbors. That one was really, really funny. I love yeah, Neighbors. Neighbors. Yeah. I thought that one was okay. Um, I didn't see it. it. I'm not, that's not my type of comedy, but, you know, what are you going to do? But... Well, I would like to thank you ladies for joining me in talking about Disney princesses today. We'll be back with uh, more shows next week on WMCM, so stay tuned. Industrial and high-tech.